lovely crinkly pile dunking a few at a time absolutely gorgeous vintage papers with a distressed aged effect last week i dyed some papers and quite frankly it wasn't very good the color was too pink the shade was too pale and it certainly didn't look vintage i was quite disappointed really and i felt like i'd wasted my time so i changed my supplies and i changed my method and i had another go and i've got something incredibly beautiful today that i think you'll really love so today i'm going to share my process for making lots and lots of these absolutely gorgeous vintage papers with a distressed aged effect so i've done it with beautiful book pages i've done it with just cheap pages from an old notebook as well and you can see this bubbling effect that i've got you can see the dyed corners you can see the splatters of white it just is absolutely incredible and i think it's going to be so useful in all of our projects. I've made up quite a few journal cards using it as backing paper so I'll show you a few of those at the end and you could also use it to decorate maybe the front of a junk journal or use it as backing paper on a page of a junk journal or you could use it to collage on any of your pockets or envelopes. So let's crack on and have a play. It is a bit messy but I'll show you everything that you need to do. And I'm going to start by sharing all of the supplies that you'll need to gather. I've laid out pretty much everything I think we'll need on my craft desk today. So I'll just talk you through each of the components. I've also got the usual process steps for you. So you can take a screenshot of these, but they are also in Pinterest. And I do have about, I think I have about 30 sheets now in Pinterest ready available free for you to use for all of my different video tutorials so do make use of those if you can get to Pinterest. So the main supply for today's project is obviously some form of paper. So I had a play with all sorts, I like to experiment. I have got some beautiful book pages and I tried it in all sorts of different textures and thicknesses. It seems to work on all of them. So I'm going to have a play today with some with some very pretty font. I've got a couple of books of Shakespeare plays which if you watch my channel you know I like. I've also got some more modern books so whiter paper because I think it's also fun to experiment and have a play with different types. And I've got some textbook pages under here. It's still a little bit yellow. You can see the contrast to this white textbook page here and I'm even going to have a go with that white as well let's have a go see what we can do with that I think it works for all of these pages so just moving round I've got some paints let's talk about paint because that's the key supply today and what I've been using is acrylic paint and I have used a beautiful burnt umber acrylic paint and a yellow now this is the let's say the adjustment that I made that I referred to a minute ago where when I originally used just this colour when it was diluted it was coming out a little bit pink and I don't like that as a vintage effect for my papers so I added some yellow and I got that beautiful it, it's, I would say it's like someone spilt your coffee on the page colour I really really like it the other elements or ingredients are some items to make bubbles in your water and I have used let's try and bring that up close I have used shower gel and I've used shampoo and I mixed them I don't know that any one is better than the other just a small amount of each of those to give the bubbles I know that Barbara 49 dragonflies had to go at doing something pressing paper onto some bubbles in water and this is really an adaptation of that because what I'm going to do as well is add some PVA glue and the reason I'm adding this is to give those bubbles some strength so that they last for some time and then as the paper as the yeah as the paper dries it still retains quite a lot of the structure of the bubbles and you get 
I would say, clearer, more distinct, more powerful impacts and a lasting effect on your paper. So it's just a, an adaptation of something that I've seen before, but I've, I've kind of had a play and had changed it and made it my own. These Arteza paints, the yellow and the brown, came from a nice set, which is a set of 14. Now, I am a brand ambassador for Arteza. I have links in the description box and a discount code, JoeyDefee10. Those are affiliate links, so that's all disclosed down below. I also think it'd be great to have a play with some beautiful blues and teals. Just imagine these paper papers having those colours. That would be absolutely gorgeous. Other things that you'll need today, not surprisingly, are something to put your water and painty liquid in. So I'm just using a it's an old washing up bowl. I've got some water in there and I'll tell you exactly how much I use and how much relative to the paint to give that thickness of colour. I've just got a measuring jug and I've got a spoon just to show you how much paint I use. I wouldn't use a, a spoon ordinarily. When we come to add some distress effects to this paper, I'm going to be using some white paint. So I dug out a really cheap child's paint. I wanted to use this up as well. I haven't been using it. And at the time I couldn't find my gesso. So you could also use diluted gesso and do splats. But I had a play with this and it worked really well. And I'll show you how I diluted that and put it in one of my spray bottles. I've got some other acrylic paints here. These have got an iridescent shimmer within them. So they would be a good alternative as well. And if you wanted to, you could dunk your scraps. So I have my scrap box behind there just to remind me to talk that through with you. So I think that's pretty much all of the supplies that we need to pull together. I've got some gloves under here to protect my hands as well. So what I'll do is set up the table and then we can start making the mixture and dunking those papers. So the first thing we need to do is step two, which is make a lovely dip dye liquid in a bowl. So I've got a basically an old washing up bowl. It's plastic and it's large enough if I wanted to to put one of the bigger pieces of paper in so that could go flat in there and that's why I chose a bowl that was relatively big. Now the bigger you make it the more liquid you probably need to put in and therefore the more paint. So there's a bit of a, a thought process here. I want something big enough for the papers but not a great big wide receptacle because then I would have to put more water in to get the depth and then more paint and I want to just make the minimum amount necessary. I've already put in the bowl one jug of water so in this bowl I have a pint already which is about half a litre. I'm just going to add one more pint of tap water and hopefully you can see inside here because that's quite important what goes on. I will just clear away the papers that I've already made. Lovely, lovely crinkly pile, how about that? And I have also a large rectangle here of cardboard and this is what I'm going to use to put the papers on when I take them out and lay them out. I do actually have an enormous one of these that I've used, I might be able to show you that a bit later, but you want something to lay your papers on when you've done the dip dyeing. So to the water we need to add some colour and I am going to have a go with what worked last time which is a tube of burnt umber acrylic paint and to try to show you exactly how much I put in and it's not an absolute science I have got this spoon so I'm going to be fairly generous it looks like chocolate doesn't it so I've got There we go, one pile of acrylic brown, and that was rather a lot, but if you want to put a lot of papers into this, then making a fair amount works, and you want it to be relatively strong. So get that off, sticking to the spoon. It's a good job I've got my gloves on. And then I'm going to do exactly the same with the yellow. And it was when I added the yellow that I seem to get that that coffee colour coming through rather than just pinks and browns. So same again, put that in. It's a bit like making a cake this. 
let's take it off the spoon and just to mix it up at this stage I'm going in with my hands you could use some kind of spoon or whisk I'm just mixing that up let's get the acrylic paint to just dilute in the water it's looking a lovely coffee colour already now to this I am going to add a few other things so as I showed you before I'm going to add I think first something to make bubbles so I've played around with shower gel and shampoo I don't know that either of them is particularly better than the other but just a cheap let's try the shower gel you can see I'm pouring out quite a lot that can go in and I might just show the child in me coming out and add a bit of shampoo too what we're looking for is something that will allow us to have bubbles but we want the bubbles to be retained and be quite strong and I just found the viscosity of these liquids to be well first of all a bit thicker and actually yeah it even smells quite nice so mix that in and to give the bubbles the ability to stay and therefore make some of those beautiful patterns on the paper as it dries we need to add some glue which means I need to be able to get the top off it's a bit messy this process but I just think you get something fabulous at the end so again let me just add a goodly amount this is getting to be quite empty so maybe you know a large amount in the palm of your hand about that for the quantities of water and paint that we're adding so it's a PVA glue and it just disperses into the water and I found that it seems to just help with those bubbles retaining their structure well that's my theory and if you've got any comments when you have a go at this please do leave them in the comment box down below because I would love to know what your builds are on this I bet you have a go with some different colours uh, you might add some different lotions and potions you could actually make the water smell really nice too I don't know whether that would come through in the paper as well lots of things to play at so I'm making up the bubbles here and I'm going to have a go at the dip dyeing and when we've done the dip dyeing and laid them out then I'm going to just do a few little extra things to add some extra effects so let's have a go at that now I'll clear a space so I have a mix of papers here some of them are book pages, they're not all particularly vintage. I have got some books from those pages from the Shakespeare plays. I've got just regular notebook paper. And what I have been doing, because I think I wanted some volume, I wanted some quantity of throughput in this process, is just dunking a few at a time. Now, sometimes they stick together and some of the effects I showed you earlier were the result of me allowing some of these pages to stay together and then they kind of allow the liquid to sit in the undulations of the paper so lack of perfection means you get some of those interesting deeper colours coming through in the paper and it's also a little bit quicker so I did to begin with start this process by just putting each page in delicately individually into the liquid and taking it out but if you're careful you can dunk a few take a few out and lay them out all together it's a lot quicker that way when I've been doing this let me just make a space when I've been doing this I actually laid a cloth on top of my cardboard my my protective cardboard which is helping the desk and what that did was a couple of things it soaked up some of the excess liquid so it helped the paper dry quicker but because that wasn't quite perfectly flat it helped me get little wells in the paper little areas where the liquid sits so it's very easy to take it out and I've got to hope you can see quite a strong coffee color from the quantities of paint that are used and it's not too deep I feel it's that vintage color it's definitely not even on each page and that's perfect the other 
suggestion I have is not to worry if any of your papers rip. Undoubtedly I will be using quite a few of mine for collage and I'll be ripping them up anyway. So just go for it, get your pages in, have a good time, maybe protect your carpet and your desk. You can see what I'm doing, I'm just layering them up. In fact I have to show you that one. That started as a little bit darker as a book page but it's coming out absolutely beautifully. So lay out your papers, that's step two. Let's have a go at step three. And step three is adding a bit of extra depth. So you can see perhaps, let me make a space, that on some of these papers the little bubbles are still sitting on top of the paper. And I found that that was because I added, I think, the PVA glue. And so as they dry, you, you see that bubble effect on the paper. So what I do is I give the paper, I give the liquid another bit of a, a shake to get more bubbles in. And I just pick up a few of the bubbles and get them on. And they've got a bit of colour in them, not a lot, but enough so that as they dry, you get some of that effect. So this isn't a project for the faint-hearted who don't like sort of digging in, getting your sleeves rolled up and maybe making a mess. But I do think it's unbelievably satisfying. So we've dunked, we've added extra bubbles. The other thing I wanted to do, maybe I'll dare to take my gloves off for this, is add some of the white splats and as I say, at the time, I couldn't find my gesso. You could use diluted gesso. So what I did is I put some white children's paint. I think it's just a basic watercolour. I added about 50-50 water, put it in a spray bottle. We'll see if it even still sprays. If it doesn't, oh, it does. It's a bit stiff. Yeah, let's see if I can get some out. Yeah, it's working quite thick and I'm just letting it splat and land and I think what I'll also do it's a very hot day and my hands are sticky I'm doing the best I hope this is a project that you have a go at I really do it's liberating and it's messy so I'm just taking the end and letting those white splats come through. Have a go with coloured paint if you want. You could splat with black, that would be really nice. Maybe a, a dark brown or some gold. And something else I've had a go at, I've been thinking about for some time, is how to get my mica and water mixture to actually stick to the page. So I'm running out a bit. Because I have PVA in the liquid, this is definitely an improvement on just spraying with mica and water. So I've been spraying with a deep gold, again I've been using Arteza mica and water, and just, again, you can spray, you can do dots, but the shimmer is much better at staying on and not sticking to your finger if you rub over it when it's all dried. So we've got some lovely effects here, we've got some drying to do. What I will do is let this dry and I'll just show you some of those finished pages again and just show you a few ideas for what I've been doing playing with the finished result. So you can see the whole board here that I filled there with just a few pages and you can see the creases which I don't mind, I really like the resultant effect at the end of the day. You can see that it still has bubbles sitting on top. I really don't think that would happen without the PVA. This is my wet board and just underneath it this is actually the board I was talking about where I've been laying out a bigger quantity and letting the colour seep through and create a lovely effect on this white fabric that I'll then use maybe on the cover of a junk journal. So I'm going to let this dry and I'll show you some of those journal cards and a couple of suggestions for how to use them. So these are a few journal cards that I had a go at making with those vintage papers and on each of them I've either used an index card or just a piece of paper that's about the same size and I've added a quantity of that vintage paper on top and then I've done some collage. 
and I think they really work because you're still seeing that interesting colour and pattern and texture in the card behind. So on this one I've got splatters of gold, I stamped and I painted and I've done just using a few scraps and a label there and a stamp. I've just added all sorts, no particular formula, unbelievably enjoyable and just a great way of using up your scraps and they work because I think you're seeing the texture in that paper that we made. If you have enjoyed watching this video, which is a bit more vlog style, messy and hopefully fun, then check out my video where I did a little bit of organisation in my craft room and played and shared how I reorganised it just to get on top of it and not feel so overwhelmed. I hope to see you soon.